Hello, my friends. Greetings from Vienna, Austria. Today, I'm going to talk about photography in museums. First thing first, is it legal? Absolutely. Unless you see big signs, no pictures, you're perfectly fine. I actually did a lot of photography and video in museums in many different countries. Usually, they have restrictions either on, spe on special art pieces or sometimes exhibits. Otherwise, it's a free game. And I'm not talking about taking pictures of actual art. That's a different profession, very complex, very sophisticated to get perfect reproduction of an art piece. I'm talking about people like me walking into a museum and doing photography of other people and art. Photographers were doing photography in museums for a very long time. You see pictures 50, 100 years ago when uh, famous photographers took pictures of people appreciating art, communicating with art in museums. There is nothing new about it. It's basically like a street photography. It's just indoors because you're taking pictures of people. In this particular situation, you're talking about connection between people and art. First of all, what kind of setup I used for photography in a museum. This is my uh, Sony a7 III with 85 1.8 lens. Why 85? It's a little bit telephoto so I can get a nice shot from a distance. 1.8 with a low light performance of a7 III allows me to photograph pretty much anywhere in the museum. And there is a big thing in this camera, what called silent shooting. Just for this function alone, I can buy this camera. Because basically what you see is when you press a button, the screen will blink like this. I'm taking pictures. You can't hear anything. Nothing. This is absolutely fantastic because I don't know if I told you before, but I started my professional career in photography as a theater photographer. I used to take pictures of classical ballet, uh, later opera and drama and so on. And clicking of the camera was a huge deal because it's usually like the perfect moment in a performance when everything is dead quiet and audience is waiting and actors on the screen and suddenly it's my click and it's like actors falling off the stage and everybody's looking at me and even if I had the permission it still was so painful it was like my main problem even though it was my profession so I did like I constructed special case from fabric trying to muffle the sound and so but still it, it never worked like perfectly. You can still hear the sound. If I could have access to this camera, that will change everything dramatically because you can take as many pictures as you want. Nobody hears this thing. If you do wedding photography, it's another thing. It's like, you know, this is a perfect moment when she and he say, I do. Everybody's quiet and suddenly your camera is working. And it's really, really game changer. And in museum, it works actually really well. Because since people can't hear me, they're busy looking at art. And because of that, I can take as many pictures as I like. And even if they notice that my lens kind of um, facing in their direction, because they can't hear anything, they can't really say, oh, you took my picture. And I'm not saying it's going to happen. Actually, it almost never happens. But still, there is no sound. So there is no real kind of moment, ah, you took my picture. So I was just hanging out, taking pictures. Uh, security was cool with it. It's always fine because as long as you don't bother people and you don't um, take pictures of something you're not supposed to, security kind of getting used to you. And I was walking the same rooms over and over and over again, looking for people, looking for interesting compositions. Another cool thing about that is that when I came to a museum, and by the way, it was Belvedere Palace in um, Vienna. Beautiful, beautiful palace and a wonderful collection of paintings. 
and when I came it was pretty busy so a lot of paintings I couldn't really see very well because there were like tons of people with little cell phones and cameras and so really anno <laughs> annoying uh, I like me saying that uh, photographer but in any case so I kind of started doing this photography and uh, along the along the way people will walk away from the paintings and I will have an opening. So I will also have time to stand in front of the painting and enjoy myself and enjoy the art. So it really worked well for me. Now let's talk about possibility of stock photography in a museum. Can you use uh, images in stock? Yeah, sure. I used it quite a lot because if you, as long as you use it editorially and there is a, uh, a clear statement that you don't have property releases and uh, model releases for people you can use it as a matter of fact just uh, like last month i sold a picture from museum in washington dc it's a um, native american museum beautiful building i took a picture there and it sold for 50 bucks not bad that's it for today i'm going to talk to you next time on saturday a uh, few people asked me questions re in respect to stock photography. I also got some pictures I can discuss, so you still have time to send me pictures. And then I will do Q&A about stock photography, and if I have your photographs, I can review them and tell you what I think, what is their value in respect to stock sales. See you on Saturday.